Wow, that's a very sobering thought. I've I've been exploring lately the vaccine protocols and particularly the potential alternative treatment devices that could be used that appear to be safer and potentially as effective as vaccines. Yeah. And, uh, the one that I'm thinking of in particular is ivermectin, which is a prophylactic that was founded in Japan about 40 years ago. So it has a, a very good safety record as it's been used in South Africa for the past 40 years to treat elephantitis and river blindness. And it seems to, anytime that it's introduced to a wide scale populace, the rates of COVID and COVID deaths drop precipitously. So, and it's also been censored on YouTube. And yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, which is, <laughs> which, which is unbelievably interesting. And that's something that I'm trying to uh, discuss more is the idea of free speech and critical thought in these things where just because somebody says that something is uh, safe in the present doesn't mean that it's going to be safe forever for people, especially young people. And I, hundred yeah. percent. I mean, yeah, I mean, that's exactly what I was referring to. You know, I've, I've spoken with a lot of people that just to get in to do their job for USA volleyball, they, they have to get a vaccine for me. I was like, from day one, it's like, they, they called me and they wanted me to come back and they're like, all right. Um, also like we, we, we would like, you know, it was like a suggestion. We would suggest you to get a vaccine. I'm just like, no, I'm fine. <laughs> and for me, I like, I, for example, I had, I had COVID and it was like one night of fever, two days of feeling lethargic. Third day I woke up and I felt great. And I was like, no, I'm not taking a vaccine. Like, um, I, I know I have to go so deep, but it's just like, you know, like I think it's a slippery slope for, um, medical freedom. And I just don't think it's uh, very genuine what's happening right now where you see um, a lot of pharmaceutical companies making trillions of dollars just in quarters, mm -hmm. seeing a lot of corporations get behind it. And you're seeing arguably um, a section in society of those who have got it and may go back to returning and living a normal life. And those that don't that, you know, might not be able to uh, go see a show, go see sports, travel. So it's very, um, it's very interesting times we are living in right now, but it's like, I just really want to have, I want to help people just think a little bit more critically like you've done, where it's like, is there a better way? Or do we just trust big pharma who will make trillions of dollars of us taking the vaccine or not make as much money if we don't. And it just doesn't seem very sincere or genuine. And I think people can think however they want, but the important thing is that they think critically. And I just don't think that's happening right now. And I think it's almost by design, as you see uh, commercials, Pepsi, Uber, Twitter, Facebook, uh, celebrities, sports stars, politicians, you know, like kind of doing the, the dance, like, Oh, look how easy it is. Like I took it. Uh, I was looking to get an Uber today and Uber is offering free rides to people to get their vaccination. Mm -hmm. just, just like, okay, like that's interesting. But, um, but yeah, I just, I just feel, um, uh, people's ability to think critically. is just, uh, getting worse and worse because we're being divided so quickly where it's either you're on this side or you're that side. And you have no other choice. You know, you're red, you're blue, you're up, you're down, you are anti-vax or you are trusting the science. It's just like, mm, these are just dualities. These are false dichotomies. These aren't real. It's not a way, it's not a human life. It's not one side or the other. You said you've talked to a lot of people about it. What are the responses that you've tended to get from people that are in disagreement with the decision that you've made? Yeah. Um, not a lot of people are in disagreement, of course. Um, and I get like where USA Volleyball is coming from. I totally get it where they want to make sure they're doing everything possible to not get a positive test because then they'd have to adhere by the government standards where you have to sit this much time out. You have to 
be at home for this amount of time and they just don't have that time. So um, there's that thought where it's like, we just need you to do it. So like we have a less chance of someone getting it in practice. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I'll put stuff once in a while on Instagram, not trying to say like one way or another, but just to help people think a little bit more like, oh, that's interesting. But of course you can tell that, you know, I'm not so pro <laughs> vaccine uh, or, or at least this, I, I don't even think you can call it a vaccine, right? It's, COVID, COVID vaccine hesitant, mRNA technology vaccine hesitant, maybe would be the, the most nuanced way to describe it. Because yeah. as you said, there's, it's not anti-vax, it's a whole new category of thought with this particular situation. And I mean, yeah, anti-vax is just, uh, I what what it's called the term, but it's just able to, to flood everyone into this one group of just mm-hmm. like, whatever it's like the science disbelievers or it's uh i mean science is becoming the new religion where it's like there's like a god and it's just like a scientist now uh, but anyways uh, most people just said that uh it's like oh you're selfish or you could be killing people and uh you know what's your thought let's let's talk to them you know i'm not afraid to, to share my beliefs uh, or my hesitancy towards it and and usually, you know, we have a good talk. And at the end, there's like a, some form of mutual respect where they're like, oh, okay. Because what they're taking is just like, you know, it's the news or on Instagram and Twitter and, and they just believe it. And it's like, bless their souls for just <laughs> being able to be so easily conditioned, I guess you could say. Or to just just to believe, right? To be so gullible. And I think for a lot of things I am very gullible too. But something like this, it just it just never really um, sat right with me. And I think it was especially because of uh, the solutions that were being offered. There was no solutions for uh, longevity or like real holistic health. Or some of the things that initially came out was like stay inside. It's like Okay, there's a lot of like chemicals inside. It's probably not good. We go outside, we get vitamin D, don't see friends. Okay, it's known through uh, a lot of studies, uh, the blue zones as well. When we, uh, when we see friends, when we see family, uh, it's able to relieve stress, able to get back in, uh, into the, shoot, what's it called? Uh, parasympathetic nervous system, right? And our body able to, do what it needs to do and heal itself. Like our body is a beautiful machine. So uh, initially too, it's just like all these things that were being told to us or solutions or the real solutions, right? It's like, wash your hands. It's like, okay, that's great. It's like, is that it? Like eat some root vegetables, you know, mix in turmeric and ginger in your smoothie. Make sure you're getting eight hours of sleep. You know, there's so many different things that they could, uh, empower or enrich the public with you know make sure we're not spending so much time on social media make sure you go maybe you don't see a friend inside but you go on a walk with someone outside real sincere genuine solutions instead it's like the only solution is just like a handout from like like a daddy government please help us daddy pharmaceutical company give me the shot give me the pill and it's just, it just, I don't know. Uh, it just never really sat well with me, especially now where it's like, there is no choice. It's like, you have to do this. And it's like, no, I can do whatever I want. Like someone asked me, it's like, if you were chosen for the Olympics, you know, how to get the vaccine, would you go? And I was like, well, Olympics is a goal I've had my entire career. And no, like, I'm not going to consent. I think it's really important for people to, to be able to say that like if something doesn't sit well with you whatever it may be like don't consent like as long as you're not doing malice or genuinely know you're not doing malice like no it's like i'll quit volleyball it's like really easy for me it doesn't like my values my priorities like i'll quit it i'll start my own life somewhere else and uh i think a lot of people feel that too but a lot of people are very sh- scared to express it because of the backlash now uh this like woke mom who 
again, just going back to like basic psychology, just want to feel loved and they're insecure and they're going to feel loved by telling other people how wrong they are.